bloggers pow Right, today we're playing Memoria Selection Volume 2. I played Volume 1 the other week, so let's play Volume 2 and see what's on here. So this was a compilation only released in Japan, and let's have the first game from 1979, and that is Samurai. Start. Right, so here we go. Start button. Now I've had a couple of goes on this, so this is a very, very ambitious game. Of course the idea is to hit the samurai with your samurai. But you've got um, different stances, so you can charge with your sword in a couple of different directions. Oh, but watch out for the guy behind. That was a bad move. Yeah, right. If you swipe on the ninja at the top of the shuriken, you can deflect his shuriken. And then you get a fight off against a boss samurai. Now you can charge him like this. And you have that uh, sort of parry sort of move. And you can quickly get another hit in. And yep, yeah, there we go, that's good. And then you do another level. Uh, it's a very ambitious game for the time. It, there's uh, some gameplay mechanics on there, here, which... The things like the parrying and the different stances are very similar to Bushido Blade, which is uh, Squaresoft's incredibly... Oh shit, what the fuck's that? Incredibly uh, brutal samurai-based fighting game. So have a look at that. I might have a look at that one day. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but it is interesting. As is this, very interesting, and I'm dead again. And there we go, Samurai. Um, it's worth having a quick bash at, if you can find it. It might be on MAME, I'm not sure. Uh, or if you've got access to this collection, maybe we'll have a go on this. Okay, so next up we've got Monaco GP. Another game from 1979. Okay, here we go. And by today's standards, no great shakes. It's a uh, upper scrolling racing game. But in 1979, this was massive. I really don't know. I think this might have been one of the first upper scrolling games of its type. It's massively ahead of its time in 1979. Of course the idea is to get as fast as you can within the time limit. We've got low and high gears which became all oh, and headlights. Yeah low and high gears which became a staple in uh, later Sega racing games and uh, all racing games come to think of it. So this sort of led the way in that respect I think. I'm sure there were other racing games which attempted to have gears but nothing quite this fast and it's really smooth. For 1979 arcade game, it's really smooth. Now I do believe um, this and probably Samurai were games which uh, were um, didn't use CPUs and memories in a traditional sense. Um, actually, bear with me, hold on. Yes, so that was it. Um, this was the uh, one of Sega's arcade games that didn't use a um, digital CPU, it used uh, discrete logic uh, circuits, which means it's not easily uh, emulated. Uh, MAME doesn't do it. Um, and the score you see on the side of the screen in the original cabinet was actually a series of uh, 
uh, LEDs showing the score and they've been transposed to the side of the uh, vertical screen on this Saturn version. So there you go, more you know, and I didn't just steal that information from uh, SegaRetro.org, honest gov. Right, so next up, Starjacker from 1983. So this game's a bit later than uh, the two we've played so far. Now if I remember correctly, this is an upward scrolling shoot em up. Okay, not a big fan of that new music. So, oh, we've got two fire buttons, we've got a ground attack and a normal air to air attack. Like uh, Xevious. And the interesting thing here is you can see your lives, so they're following you along like that. So I've lost one. And I'll continue with uh, the two remaining ships. So you take your ships with you as you go along. A little bit interesting. A bit tad unusual. But aside from that, it's a fairly standard upward scrolling shoot em up. It's fairly pretty for a 1983 game, I think. I like those sorts of uh, forced perspective graphics on the side there to make you think like you're flying through a tunnel or a trench or something. There's also is to be absolutely rock hard. I'm not sure if those purple things will kill me, so I'm not going to go anywhere near them. Doesn't appear to be in a power up since yet, but uh, maybe I'm missing too many of these ground targets to qualify for a power up. Oh crap. I think I'm going to try and aim my ground shots with a bit more uh, accuracy. Um, it's a shame it doesn't have this uh, the um, aiming reticle the way Xevious does the ground attacks. Yeah, you've not really got a real uh, indication of uh, where your ground attacks are going to land. I think uh, the hit and hope. Oh shit, I was going to say the hit and hope um, strategy I employed before isn't working as well, but I am playing. Hold on, and the purple things do kill you. There you go. Never go through and touch the tall purple things. Right, so next up we have got another 1983 game. This is Simbad Mystery. Intelligent puzzle game presented by Sega. Okay, let's have a look. Oh my god, what's going on? So, those are the mis Simbad's mystery. Oh, I can dig holes, but maybe not in that place. Okay, so, we know we can dig holes. Okay, let's fuck some of shit up by digging a hole. Oh, what the... Okay, for some reason I couldn't dig that hole. There we go. And the hole just sort of blocks the... That looks like Orko from He-Man. It's really pissed off. And I'm presuming collecting all the question marks will lead me to the next stage. Okay. Stand there and wonder what the hell's going on. And I wonder if I can collect some more question marks. And I wonder if I can push that boulder into or something. Oh fuck, no! Oh, you can fill the hole in again. That's Go on, go on, go on. I'm sort of stuck now, aren't I? I've sort of really sort of just messed shit up now. Ah, crap. Okay, see so if we can get these last few question marks on this slot, on this stage. Fuck, no. Arse, arse. Go. Last question mark. And there's a, a treasure chest there. I presume that's the ultimate plan. Yes, just in time. And let's play, let's go to the next island. Oh, was that an island? Yeah, so it's, you know, it's a fairly sort of. Oh, bollocks. Standard maze type game, it's 
I wish there was a better way of uh, combating the uh, opponents there, but... Oh well, I suppose it is what it is, but... Uh, yeah, okay, let's uh, move along. Right, so next up we have Doki Doki Penguin Land. I know, because I can't read Japanese and I've read that off. Sega Retroid at all. What are you going to do? It was one of the hottest days in the year when I recorded this. Seriously. Right, so press the start button. And here we go. We've got to get all the way down to the bottom to get... I don't know. There doesn't seem to be a point. Oh, I've got to roll the egg down to the bottom. So, roll the egg along. We've got a jump button. Dig button. So, and I squashed that polar bear good. Hold on, polar bear? Penguin? Well, that's bullshit, isn't it? Cause that's bullshit too, the egg broke. I've no idea how I managed to do that. Probably jumped on it. Um, yeah, useful he safety tip. Don't jump on your egg. It's okay to push it down like that, but just don't jump on it. Oh, now the polar bear fucked my egg up. Oh, great. Anyway, so polar bears come from the North Pole. Penguins come from the South Pole, generally. They really shouldn't be in the same game together. Well, at least that's why I, that's why I thought uh, I was told the name. Pop this once. And now, I don't know. I don't know what I'm, how I'm supposed to... And what the hell is the Grim Reaper is coming after on my egg? Okay, massively frustrating. Uh, yeah, don't really want to play that again. Sorry, bye. And the last game on the compilation from 1985 is Ninja Princess. Now this... is sort of... Well, okay. There's a game on the Master System called The Ninja. And this is essentially what that game was, I believe, sort of. It, 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 Ninja is the anglicised version of this game, Ninja Princess, as far as I'm aware. Comment below, tell me I'm wrong, it's fine. Don't expect me to do research or something, do you? Princess's adventure starts, good for her. And she's got changed for the occasion with her great big saucer-shaped eyes. Right, nice map. And we've got a... shit. As I was saying, and we've got an upward scrolling commando style running gun, and a very good one as well. I've we'll played this on main a few times. No auto fight, so I am hammering the hell out of these buttons. And you do have a time limit down there, so you can't just hang around. And you do have a button. You've got a button that will mess you up like that. Now we've got a button which will turn you invisible uh, should you get into a pinch. Wait, one point there. But this is a, a real fun little game. Uh, I just happen to be shit at it. So we're going to have another go. Be having a ninja folk. Oh. It just makes me think of there's a game that you always see on these Famicoms. So it's a, it's a Famicom game, but, but you play as a farmer. Um, fighting off ninjas. Um, I can't for the life of me remember what it is called, even if it's actually a real game, but it always appears on those Famicom cartridges. Um, I'm not even I can remember by the time I edit this. I'll uh, enlighten you all. Oh, we have a boss. A boss who threw his sword in me while I was almost invisible. What I get. Points mean nothing. Oh, right. Yep, so Big Eyed Boss got me there. So yeah, that's a really good fun game. So, there we go. The uh, Sega Memorial Collection Volume 2. Uh, a few more games on this than there was on Volume 1. Volume 1 only had four games, so this has six. And that's them, there's a couple which are worth playing. Uh, Monaco GP, uh, 
and uh, Ninja Princess, a couple which are a bit of a curiosity, uh, and, and um, stupid penguin thing can go and die in a hole for all I care. It's really frustrating and annoying. Uh, but yeah, what do you think of those? Have you played them before? Comment below. Yeah, subscribe or naff off.